Endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs are chemicals that mimic, block or alter the body's natural hormone production and regulation. And sometimes they act like estrogen, which is why they are sometimes referred to as xenoestrogens. Or they might disrupt pathways related to testosterone production, thyroid hormones and many more. And the problem is, well there are two problems, <laughs> one is that those EDCs are pervasive in our modern life, they are everywhere and we'll get to that. The second problem is that even small amounts or exposure to relatively low doses over time can accumulate because some of those endocrine disrupting chemicals are stored in our fat cells and that's where they accumulate and then cause issues over time. So with that out of the way, let's jump into some of the top sources of those EDCs. And number one, very high on the list are plastics and food storage containers. And I mentioned them separately because plastic is not only an issue in food storage, it's also an issue in clothing, right? A lot of our, you know, underwear, you know, all of the functional clothing, underwear, workout shorts, all of those things are very often just polyester, plastic at the end of the day that can cause issues. But from a pure food storage uh, container perspective and anything really associated with food, there are usually a couple of chemicals that are critical and that is bisphenol A or BPA. I'm sure you've heard of that. Um, and then there is bisphenol S. There are other, well, in, in fact, there are other BPs. One thing I want to point out in the beginning is that just because something is BPA free does not mean it's chemical free because a lot of brands, what they do is they remove or replace BPA with BPS. One is not any better than the other, but most people don't know about BPS. So they are fine if they see the label BPA free. They think it's healthy then. It is not. The other issue with plastics are phthalates. Uh, and those of, both of those are, are xenoestrogens that can bind to estrogen receptors in the body and then potentially alter the reproductive and metabolic processes that are involved. The easiest way to avoid those problems is to opt for glass or stainless steel and clothing made from natural materials. So anything that contains plastic, stay away from it. Obviously, you know, the worst you can do is to heat plastics or plastic food storage containers in a microwave or dishwasher, whatever, because that dramatically accelerates the leaching. But even at room temperature, studies have shown that leaching of endocrine disruptors from, from plastic into liquids, into acidic foods, into salty foods can occur. So I recommend staying away from plastic altogether to be on the safe side. Number two is personal care products. That's also a big thing because there are so many products we put onto our on our skin every single day from deodorant to lotions to you know a shower cream to soaps to hand sanitizers there are just so many things that we get in daily contact with and a lot of them have parabens phthalates and you know very often it, it, does, it doesn't always spell out phthalates on the label but if you see something that has a fragrance uh, or something that has a benz in the name or fan in the name those are very often not always but very often a clear sign that you're dealing with endocrine disrupting chemicals in the product and you want to avoid that um, now i have a, a list of uh, products that we use household products including personal care products uh, that are toxin free that are EDC free. I'm going to link that down below. You can download that list and check it out. There are some products that now, you know, say paraben free or phthalate free on the label, but again, or fragrance free even, but you really, I encourage you to learn how to read a label because very often when you see paraben free, then they use something else that might be equally problematic. It just happens to be not a paraben and a lot of consumers just fall for that. The other thing is, well, next up in the list are pesticides and herbicides, you know, and there are, you know, those classic chemicals you might have heard, you know, like atrazine and glyphosate, you know, are just two examples of many or organophosphates that have also endocrine disrupting properties. And so my recommendation is to not use those products yourself. Don't spray glyphosate or Roundup or whatever in your yard because you want to get rid of some, some weeds. Um, I would recommend you not do that because that stuff is sometimes can get easily then into the groundwater and then, you know, through, you know, your city water comes back right into your tap. We're going to talk about tap water in a bit, or you might just get exposed to it by handling it. And from a, you know, if you buy produce in the store, let's say, try to buy organic. Now, organic doesn't always mean completely chemical free, but you can be at least certain there is no glyphosate and some of those harsher chemicals on them, but still peel the produce, wash it and, and support, you know, sustainable farming practices that do not rely on those chemicals. Next up, canned food. You know, that might be something you're not aware of, but very often the lining, you know, if you buy a can, you think, well, it's aluminum, you know, it's fine. But the thing is most foods, 
when they come in contact with aluminum, they might still cause corrosion, especially if it's something acidic or salty. So most cans are lined on the inside and very often that lining is made out of BPA. And that's especially problematic for acidic foods, you know, like for example, canned tomatoes um, is one of the, one of those things that can easily leach that BPA out of that lining and into the food and then you consume it and you end up with those issues. Now, again, you can look for cans that say BPA free, but again, who knows, maybe then they're going to use BPS. So you really have to reach. I once tried that with, uh, I think it was San Pellegrino. I reached out to them and asked what they use for their cans. I mean, we typically buy the glass bottles, but they also have a canned product. And I asked them and they said, well, they're not going to, they're not going to uh, share that information. So that tells me that it's probably something that I don't want to consume. <laughs> and um, so, you know, opt for fresh or frozen products when possible, or really know if the cans is BPA free that, you know, inquire and make sure that they don't use BPS or something equally toxic. Next one up is household cleaners. That's also a common uh, source of uh, alkyl phenols and, and other chemicals that can, also VOCs for that matter, you know, that can cause or that have endocrine disrupting uh, properties. So I highly recommend you use non-toxic cleaners. We use Total Clean from HypoAir. That's completely non-toxic. You probably even drink this and it would not be a problem. Um, but find something that is that does not have any of those chemicals. And the problem is most products out there do have at least some of those because that's it's just cheaper and you know easier to manufacture you know cleaning products uh, with those chemicals because they they work for the purpose that they are designed they just happen to have significant side effects from a health perspective so non-toxic green uh, or even you know plant-based cleaners i'm not a huge fan of you know plant-based eating but from a cleaning perspective that's probably better than some of the toxic alternatives and you know ventilate also your home when you clean and you have a cleaner that might, might not be 100 percent ideal uh, next up is non-stick cookware you know those are really a sor sources of of per and polyfluoroalkyl substances or pfas and pfoa all stuff that you do not want to have in your body because they've been linked to thyroid disruption immune system issues and endocrine disrupting uh, properties as well and the problem is they are one of those things that are hyper uh, persistent in the body and the environment meaning that they don't go away those are some of those forever chemicals if you've heard the term where once they're there they're not going to go anywhere. If they are in your body, they stay in there for potentially decades or even until you die. Uh, they stay in the environment. So you definitely want to avoid that. And the easiest way to avoid that is to not use non-stick cookware, at least not in the traditional sense, meaning no Teflon and stuff. Instead, use, you know, s something as simple as as cast iron, you know, skillets, for example. We use cast iron and, and stainless steel predominantly. They are also non-stick. If you season that cast iron pan properly, it's not gonna stick. If you use plenty of, of healthy animal fat, nothing is gonna stick. You can scratch them. The only thing that comes off is some iron. So you get some more iron in your diet, which you can use anyway. And so those would be my recommendations. So just stay away from non-stick stuff. There are certain non-stick surfaces that have been made with a water-based coating that is apparently non-toxic based on the scientific evidence I've seen. So those could be options, but if you want to be on the safe side, cast iron and stainless steel have been around forever and they are non-toxic. Next one up is flame retardants. And that's something that we didn't really consider when we jumped onto that, you know, avoiding xenoestrogen bandwagon because camping tents, furniture at home, most of those products, even sometimes clothing, they are treated with uh, polybrominated diphenyl ethers or PBDEs. Those are flame retardants, meaning that, you know, if you get close to a flame or whatever, they're not going to burst in flame and, and burn down uh, quickly. The problem with those chemicals is, again, that they accumulate in fat tissue and they have been strongly associated with thyroid disruption and neurodevelopmental issues. So uh, there are fortunately now a lot of brands that don't use those chemicals anymore, at least on the tent side you know we've looked at i think uh, rei for example one of the, the the stores that we often go to when it comes to buying camping and outdoors equipment uh, they started phasing out you know those chemicals in their own in in the, the rei branded product lines i really like that there are also now a lot of furniture manufacturers even though less so than on the camping side that do not use those flame retardants anymore but especially with furniture, it's a pain in the butt. My recommendation is if you really, you know, if there are certain types of furniture you really like and you cannot find them without those chemicals, buy them maybe used because chances are they have maybe aired out a little bit, at least from a VOC perspective. Some of that stuff might have degraded already. And so those are generally healthier 
than a brand new product. Uh, not healthy because as I mentioned before, some of those chemicals stick around for a very long time, but at least you can improve the situation a little bit. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, look for, for furniture and textiles labeled PBDE free. Those exist. Um, it might just be more expensive as always um, and harder to find. Next one up is tap water. And there are a host of chemicals found in tap water. At least, you know, it, well, it can happen obviously if you have well water, but also if you get the water from your municipality. There are perchlorides, uh, there are heavy metals, there are industrial chemicals, there are birth control, you know, pill residue, you know, whenever, you know, obviously our, at least our water treatment facility here in Georgia, they don't test for birth control. They don't test for certain things, but they don't measure it. And so you get a lot of stuff in that water and in addition to what they put in like chlorine and fluoride and those are all neurotoxins that you do not want to consume and so the easiest way uh, to prevent that from happening is to use you know to filter your tap water we have a whole house filtration system that takes all of that out or most of them out we also have an ro system that realizes the water but something as simple as an activated carbon filter can really help to remove most of those contaminants and if you're on a private well you know test your well for contaminants and potentially also use a, a water filtration system like you know a whole house filtration is really the easiest because you get clean water from every faucet and even in the shower you know if you're thinking well i'm not drinking the water in the shower but some of those you know when especially when you shower hot some of those chemicals then get airborne and you inhale them they are bad for your skin so it's even also or also good to have your water filtered the water that you shower with and bathe with to have that properly filtered. Next one up, that's something you might have heard because it's kind of became a thing on social media is receipts and thermal paper. You know, some of those, you know, packaging lists or whatever you receive when you, when someone sends you a package, they're usually lined with BPA or BPS. And so whenever I go to the store, you know, I try not to handle the receipt. If I don't need the receipt, you know, I say, no, thank you. I don't need it. Don't even touch it. If there is an option to get it, you know, electronically or digitally, I do that. If I really have to touch it, I touch it like on a corner and, you know, you know, try not to touch it too much and then wash my hands immediately because those chemicals can get absorbed through your skin. And if you do that every day, especially if you're a cashier or, you know, work in, you know, I don't know, in a restaurant or whatever, and you deal with those things a lot, or you work in a warehouse where you print packing sheets or what have you, you know, don't touch that stuff. There are a lot of chemicals in there that can negatively impact your endocrine system and make you, you know, gain weight, infertile, and all of the things we discussed initially. Next one up are food additives. You know, there are many like BHA or BHT, uh, but many, many others. And uh, research has shown that those additives can disrupt endocrine uh, function and, um, and cause cognitive issues as well. So try to stay away from additives, try to stay away from processed foods, really. You know, if you don't eat processed foods, you're not going to get exposed to food additives. Uh, but if you buy processed foods and there are certain foods, you know, that are, you know, convenient to, to consume, um, make sure you read the label carefully and you, you check out exactly what's in there, you know, especially the other ingredients sometimes. That has all of the nasty stuff that are, might not be the active ingredient, might not be the main ingredient, but it's also in there. Make sure you carefully read the label and you learn how to and you learn how to read a label. That's incredibly important. But staying away from processed foods as much as you can, and especially inexpensive, hyper-processed, ultra-processed foods with food colorings and other well additives and stuff, you definitely should avoid. So number one is obesity and metabolic issues. You know, those EDCs are also sometimes called uh, obesogens because they alter fat storage and insulin sensitivity. And whenever that is affected, you're more likely to store fat. You have the inability to lose weight and everything in the metabolism gets disrupted and isn't working well. The second issue are thyroid disorders. You know, there are certain chemicals like perchloride or PFAS and PBDEs that can interfere with the thyroid hormone production or function, and that can lead to hypothyroidism or other thyroid issues. Not a good thing. Next one up is neurological and developmental concerns, especially if children, young children are exposed to EDCs that can impair cognitive development and increase the risk of behavioral disorders. And you might've heard it already, but the FDA uh, is finally uh, banning uh, one of the, the red food colorings because they also have, that food coloring has also been associated with uh, developmental concerns and neurological issues in kids. It took way too long, but that's just one of many sources of those EDCs that can cause those those issues so with kids in particular it's it's very problematic next one is cancer risk you know there are hormone sensitive cancers like breast cancer and prostate cancer that can be influenced by the chronic exposure to substances 
that mimic estrogen or disrupt androgen function. Infertility, reproductive issues, pregnancy and birth complication. That's really a big thing because those xenoestrogens, anytime there is a sex hormone involved or there are chemicals involved that mimic that sex hormone or change the function or block the function, you have a potential for infertility, reproductive issues, pregnancy and birth complications. And that's not a good thing. Now with that, we're going to wrap it up. Let me know if you learned something new, if there were maybe a couple of sources that you did not consider. How far along are you in your endocrine disrupting chemical avoidance journey? Have you replaced all of your plastic food storage containers already? Do you filter your tap water? Let me know what you do. You know, we've, we've come quite a long way on trying to uh, reduce all of that. We change a lot of our clothing and all of our underwear is now natural fiber, no longer plastic, but it's a process. It takes a while. It can be expensive. So let me know where you are on this journey. Uh, and did you even know about all, any of that or was it all new? Let me know in the comments, subscribe, stick around, send this video to someone who might benefit from it. Until next time.